So in this video, I want to talk about why I think Kill Team is underrated. So if you follow the channel, obviously Kill Team is one of my favorite games. And if you ask a lot of people in nerd culture what Warhammer 40,000 is, they'll probably know what it is. But if you ask them what Kill Team is, they probably won't. Even within the Warhammer 40,000 community, most people haven't actually tried out Kill Team. So I constantly travel to different states for work. And a lot of times when I do, I try to stop in and see local game stores. Normally I ask about Kill Team, and they normally have a really small session dedicated to it if they actually carry Games Workshop stuff. And then when I ask about how big Kill Team is in the community, they say they have a few people stop in to play it, but it's like a small minority. Normally they only have people stop in a few times ever to actually play the game. Maybe that's because Kill Team's easier to play at home than full scale 40k is. But still, that's the same store I did everywhere. I'm talking about a sample size of maybe 50 stores here, and I'd say maybe five of them say they regularly have people come in and actually play Kill Team. So, why is that? Well, I think a lot of it comes from the 2018 edition of the game. Because in the 2018 edition, honestly, you were basically playing Big Hammer, Warhammer 40,000. Only you were playing it on a smaller scale, like 1 to 200 points, and you basically only had infantry. Besides that, the phases and the rules and how strength and toughness and everything worked was pretty similar. It was really close. Like, the only reason me and my friends even started playing Kill Team in the first place was we wanted to play Warhammer 40,000, but we didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars to not even know if we liked it. We were basically using Kill Team as a demo for 40k. We didn't actually want to play Kill Team for the sake of Kill Team. Like most people, we just assumed it was baby 40k. But now, that's just not true. In 2021, Games Workshop re-released Kill Team into the current edition and completely changed it. It now has unique stealth mechanics. It has a way different line of sight rules. Completely different stats for the individual operatives. And then it has some really unique Kill Team specific teams. It really does feel like a game where you're controlling a little special operations team, not just part of a 40k army. But even though all that changed, most people still think it's just scaled down 40k. So that means for marketing, it's competing against stuff like just playing a combat patrol game, or doing the new boarding action game, or whatever it is Dames Workshop's doing at the time as their entry point into 40k. And for people that already play 40k, why would they step down into a smaller, like, noob-friendly game when they already have the real thing? So for Kill Team to not be underrated, I think what needs to happen is it really needs to be viewed by the community as a standalone game. Obviously, there's miniature crossover. The lore's the same as 40k. It's set in the same universe. But for the actual game mechanics, it really needs to be looked at as its own thing not just a stepping stone into the main game. So now that I've talked about why Kill Team is underrated, I want to talk about the reasons people should give it a chance. The first is that the mechanics of Kill Team, like the actual gameplay rules, are so unique compared to anything else in the GW ecosystem. Like every time a model moves, you can assign it an engage or a conceal order, so it can either play aggressively or try to stay stealthy. And this game has a huge emphasis on really using cover or using vantage points to deny that cover. It's really all about positioning. So it's not about like optimizing your list building. There's a little bit of that. Or choosing the most meta army. Like I said, there's a little bit of that too. But really, it's about trying to out-strategize your opponent. It feels more like you're playing chess than it does a random dice rolling game. There is random chance and there is luck. You do roll dice but I've never lost or won a kill team match because of the dice. It's always my skill or my opponent's skill. Don't get me wrong, there's been some matches the dice are against me, but I can't blame them at the end of the day. I could have positioned well enough where I could have won regardless. So if someone wanted a really precise tactical game, where your model just being an inch off can really affect on if they can get the shot off or not, it's really good for that. And because you have fewer models, like, I think Barbly 7 or 8's pretty average, you can really micromanage each one and really know exactly what you're planning to do with every operative. Another awesome thing in Kill Team is the model selection. 
I think the Kill Team original models, like the ones that come out for Kill Team before they're carried over to 40k, are way underrated. While I love miniature agnostic games and actually getting to choose your own miniatures, like stuff you find on Etsy or stuff from other games, something about Kill Team where it has an advantage is everybody knows the lore, everybody knows the universe. There's a few hundred 40k books, so the lore for it is awesome. It goes into so much detail. So you can really draw from that and give your characters a lot of personality. Like if you really like orts in 40k, the commando team that came out are so cool. Every model can be something different. It can be a different type of specialist. So you have Gretchen that had grappling hooks. You have bomb squids. You have an orc with a battering ram that bursts through walls. They just have so much unique stuff to them. And that's true for a lot of the teams. Every year we're getting eight or more unique teams like this where all the models are designed for this game. Not designed for 40k and brought into Kill Team, but designed for Kill Team. So no matter what fashion you like, chances are there's something you can do with it in the game. Like, if you really like Nurgle, Death Yard and Chaos Demons haven't been updated yet, but there's the Delar Poss Infected. And that team just has a huge amount of variety to them. You have little small units, or you have the big mutated guys. And this isn't even getting into stuff like kit bashing. All of these that I'm showing right now are just how the models come. I think there's some of the best stuff that comes out of Games Workshop. And then in general, Games Workshop makes some of the best models. So I really think the Kill Team models are some of the best out there by far. So another thing that's underrated in Kill Team is honestly the community. Even though it's hard to walk into a shop and just find people playing Kill Team, like I said earlier, most of these shops have a Discord group or a Facebook page or something, and you can normally organize a match in your local area. And if not, you can go on to one of the big Kill Team Discords and go to Tabletop Sim and play a game there. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but there's probably a way somehow you can get a match in without really having to travel. Especially since most 40k players already own Kill Teams, even if they don't know it. So to brag on the Kill Team community a little bit, the creativity in this community is amazing. So Games Workshop pitches it like it's just a competitive, like, tournament-style game. And for a lot of people it is, and that's fine. But there's so many other ways to enjoy it. If you look up Kill Team Kit Bashes or Kill Team Proxies, you'll find some amazing stuff if you really like the hobby side of it. Or if you look up stuff like Kill Team Narrative Missions, you can find ways to play Kill Team as an ongoing narrative. Even in the core rules, there's actually ways to play that. So it can be a more casual, ongoing game with a little bit of story to it. That's something you can do. So even just on my channel, I have a rule set to play four-player Kill Team. And then I have a bunch of homebrew rules. So if there's other fashions that aren't released yet that you want to play, you can play those. And I'm obviously not the only one that does that. There's so many awesome rule sets out there that aren't official that as long as you're not in a tournament, you can play them. I think there's even people out there that have come up with kind of like AI rules so you can play single player against the AI or you and a buddy team up against it. So if you want to play competitively, you can do that. If you want to play more narratively or casually, you can do that too. There's so much more to it than just being a stepping stone into Warhammer 40,000. And with the way the new mechanics are, it's nowhere close to just being that anymore. So that's why I think Kill Team is underrated. 